Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Linux Mint XFCE. I know we've talked about Cinnamon and we've talked about GNOME, but this one I think out of all of them is the best one. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything and at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee or better yet, become a patron to the channel on Patreon. Those links are in the description down below. Linux Mint. Let's go ahead and we're going to open up their website. And if you've ever been to their website, you'll notice right off the bat, they've got a new website. It's actually a lot more leaner, a lot more cleaner looking and easier to get around. And if you don't know about Linux Mint, it's an operating system for desktop and laptop computers. It's based on Ubuntu. It's made really user friendly. And you can do anything from graphic design, productivity, gaming, multimedia, and it's easy to use, fast, and comfortable. Everything just works without the need to configure or install extra applications. Keep it simple, stupid. They use the KISS method. Home rule, it's your computer, your rules, community-centric, free and open source, and it's rock solid. Now, if you want to look at downloads, let's go ahead and click up here. You've got downloads. We can click on that. You've got installation guide. And it's got a nice little installation guide right here. But what I really like about it, if you want to take a picture of this with your phone, you can actually have it directly on your phone, which is awesome. So I'm going to close out of that. Then you've got the project. You've got funding, donors, sponsors, partners, contributing. You can get involved. And then about Linux Mint, frequently asked questions, documentation, screenshots, privacy and cookies, team, contact us. And then links. You've got the website, blog, forums. What you need to remember about Linux Mint or any other distribution that you download. When you go to their website and you download it, don't forget it once you've got it downloaded. If you have problems or you have questions, you need to come back to the site. They've got forums built right in. You can reach them on Facebook, Twitter. You can get all the information you need to help you out with your problems right back here on their website. Now, if you go over to download, click on download, they're going to give you the option. You've got Cinnamon Edition. You've got the Mate Edition. And then the one we're looking at today is the XFCE Edition. We've already got it downloaded and I got it fired up in boxes. So what we're going to do right now is close out of the website and go take a look. If you download Linux Mint XFCE, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine or open it in GNOME boxes, this is the screen you're met with. Right off the bat, you're going to have your home folder up here. You're going to have install Linux Mint up here. What I'm going to do right off the bat is right click. You can create a launcher, URL link, folder. You can open in terminal, desktop settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at desktop settings. And they give you options for your backgrounds. You get, obviously, a beautiful looking black Linux Mint right out of the box. I'm just going to see if there's anything different we could change it up to just to give it a different feel and look. And I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to close out of that. You've got one panel. It's down here on the bottom. You've got time. You've got sound. You've got computer, your power. You've got internet. Of course, you've got your notifications. If you right click, you can go to panel. You can go to panel preferences, log out, help, about. We're going to go to panel preferences. And here's where you make adjustments to your panel if you want to change it up a little bit. Right now, the mode's on horizontal. You can take it vertical and then move it to where you want it, or you can take it to a desk bar, but we're gonna go ahead and leave it horizontal. You can lock the panel. You can automatically hide the panel if you want to. Never, intelligently, or always. Always just means if you're not on the panel, it's gonna hide. And then intelligently, it'll stay on your screen until you open up an application and go to full screen mode. And then measurements, you've got row size. Right now it's at 32. You can actually make that bigger if you choose. And if you notice, the panel starts getting a little bigger, makes those icons a little easier to see. If that's something you want to do, that's all up to you. Then you've got appearance. It's got general. Now, you can make it dark mode if you choose. You can switch that over to dark mode, or you can leave it back on the regular mode it was on. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to dark mode. Background, use system style, adjust size automatically for your icons, which means if there's an icon for an application, that once you download it is a different size than what you have down here, it'll automatically adjust it so it looks normal. And then you've got opacity on your panel. You can bring that down or you can bring it up. That's just something that when you start using the system and you want to adjust on a little bit, you can tweak that to your needs. And then you've got items. This is where you can add things to the panel down here. I'm not going to do that at present, 
But if you need to customize this panel and, and set it up the way you want it, you can definitely do that. And then when you come down here on the bottom, you've got show desktop, you got Firefox, which we were just looking at. Then you have your terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. And let's see if they have HTOP installed out of the box. And they do not. So let's try top. They do have top. So let's go to full screen. I have issued this machine two gigabytes of memory right now at rest. It is only using 625 megabytes, which is, is pretty light. I've seen some in the four, 400 range, but this is Linux Mint. It's based on Ubuntu. It's going to be just a little heavier. But at the same time, if you're wanting to use something like Linux Mint on an older machine, you can download the XFC version, throw it on there, and it's going to run pretty smooth. Because right now I'm using this on a two CPU, two gigabyte of RAM GNOME box instance. So as you can see, there's no lagginess and it's pretty smooth. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, your Thunar file manager. Thunar is a lightweight file management system. It just lets you get your work done and doesn't get in your way. OK, over here, you have your usual suspects, computer, desktop documents, things like that nature, then your file system. And then, of course, your network and then your main home folders right here. Now, this is version 4.16.8. So it's a pretty up to date version of Thunar. It's just simple, clean, quick, and it stays out of your way. So let's close out of that. So now we're going to go down here and we're going to open up the Linux Mint applications. And right off the bat, we're going to go to accessories. On accessories, you've got application finder, calculator, catfish file search, disks. I kind of like their version of disks. You can go in here and do all the partitioning that you need to do. It makes things rather simple and easy. So let's close out of that. And then you've got your document viewer, image viewer, Redshift, task manager. And if you go to task manager, it should be pretty close to what we were showing on top. Memory is at about 954 right now and the CPU is less than 5%. And then your processes are about 239 running. So let's close out of that. Then you go down to graphics. You've got document scanner, drawing, pics, internet. You've got Firefox, you got Thunderbird for your mail, you got transmission for your torrents, and then you've got web apps. This is something I like. On Linux Mint, you have what's called web apps, and you could do something like, let's add one, let's put the name of it, let's say YouTube. Then you can come down here to the address and just make it www.youtube.com. And it automatically, if you see, it brings up an icon, category, internet, browser, Firefox, navigation bar incognito window just click ok and you've got youtube then you come down here go over to internet find youtube just right click on it you can add it to desktop you can add it to favorites or you can add it to your panel and if you notice it's right over here under your web apps part so if you're doing things you need to get to youtube real quick you just click on it it opens it up in an app form if you notice there is no address bar it opens it up just like an app. So you can do everything you need to do in there and close out. And it's right here if you need it to. And if you don't want it there, just right click, remove. You can put it on the desktop if you want or just keep it in your apps up here. Then we go down to multimedia. You've got celluloid, install multimedia codecs. If you've got missing codecs, that's definitely something you want to do, especially if you're going to be listening to a lot of audio or doing any kind of video work or watching YouTube online on a browser. You're going to want to make sure you handle that. And then you've got Pulse Audio and then you've got Rhythmbox. Office, you get LibreOffice out of the box. Settings, you've got About Me, you've got Appearance, you've got Backup. Let's go ahead and open up Appearance. Right now we're on the Minty. You can go down through here. You can find the Minty Dark if you want. I kind of lean towards that, so I'm going to leave that. Then you've got icons. You're using the Minty icons if you want to change your icons up. You just go up here, find the icon set you want to go with. Then you can change it. Now, if you want to add icons, you can download and add them right here. Then you would go to downloads, click on the icon you want to add, and it would be added. So let's cancel out of that. Let's just try something different so you can see. Let's go Minty Purple, and there we go. Our icons have switched over. As you see, you've got a purple U down here, and these icons have kind of changed. So, And then you've got fonts. Right now, you're using the standard Ubuntu regular font, size 10. Now, if you want to make your fonts bigger, there's two ways you can do it. You could like go up here, pick out the font you wanted, and then down here, just kind of let's bump it up to 12. Let's click Select. And as you can see, everything changed. 
or you can change it right here with the DPI settings. You can actually click on those and it'll make everything a little bigger. So that's a way to adjust your fonts. So let's close out of that. You've got driver manager, firewall configuration, and you've got software manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. This is one of the things that people that do use Linux Mint love is their software manager and it has populated. And as you can tell, you've got editors picks, which will be your first ones up here. Everything from no maps, blender, VLC, steam, Minecraft, and then categories. You can go down here and pick a category. Let's say sound and video, and then it's going to list them all. Then you could go strictly video. And let's say you wanted to find something like OBS. There's OBS studio. It's got 4.4 stars out of five reviews. You just click on that, come over here, click install, and you're good to go. Or you could do it from the home screen and just pick something like Caden Live. And there's Caden Live. You've got two different versions here. One is from the repositories, and then the other is from the Flat Hub. So flat packs. And that's not the only way to get software. If you go back over, you've got the software center. You've also get Synaptic Package Manager out of the box. And if you're familiar with Synaptic, it's just another way for you to get software. And it's probably my preferred way. Whatever's more comfortable for you as a user is what I suggest you go with. You just come up and do a search. You can look for OBS, search. And as you can see, after you click search, it brings you to this area of the packages. And there's OBS, OBS plugins, OBS Studio. You could pick like OBS Studio mark for installation and it'll let you know that to install it you've got to install these other packs so you're going to have to mark those mark them they're all marked once you have them marked and you're ready to install them you would just come up and click apply so that's just something else for you to look at when you're taking linux mint for a test drive or if you decide to go ahead and take that leap and install it then you've got task manager then you've got your youtube web app and then your system of course you got backup boot repair g parted and you've got time shift now, I recommend this. If you do install it, if you decide to take that leap, once you get it completely set up, all your apps in place, and you've got it the way you want it, what you need to come over here and do is do a snapshot of the system. What that's going to do is when you click on Wizard, it's going to ask you, are you RSync or BTRFS? If you didn't use the BTRFS or ButterFS or BetterFS, just stick with RSync. And it'll say help. This right here will kind of explain what rsync snapshots are. What they're going to do is they're going to take a snapshot of your system as in its present form with all your applications installed. And that's a running system. Should you run into a problem in the future, your system not work or something gets messed up and you can get into time shift, restore it to a previous snapshot where the system had no issues and get it back up and running smoothly. So that's the advantage of having time shift. So let's close out of that. And let's close out of that. And let's go back down. And I think that was pretty much it. Like I said, everybody's familiar with Linux Mint, really familiar with Cinnamon. They're familiar with the Gnome or the Mate. Uh, I even think there's a, a community budgie edition out there. But for my money, I like the XFCE. It's quick. It's lean. It's low on resources. But at the same time, it lets you get the work done. And it comes with quite a few applications right out of the box. Tell me what you think of Linux Mint XFCE down below in the comments. Don't forget, before you leave today, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, those links are in the description down below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.